Thank you, Presiding Officer, Honourable Members of Parliament, dear colleagues. I'm very pleased to address the uh, 10th International Conference of National Human Rights Institutions. And I wish to thank the Scottish Parliament for hosting this event and the Scottish Human Rights Commission and the ICC for co-organizing this conference together with my office. Um, let me uh, first say how impressed I am to be in, in this parliamentary building. Um, as Alan said, there's so much heart in the, in the Scottish Parliament. I see it here in this building, all the light that's thrown over your discussions. I bet it's very hard to sleep in a place like this. I, I also want to say how pleased I am to see such a large representation of young people here, because your presence assures me of continuity and that you will really advance in the protection of human rights. And, and, and before I begin my address, I also want to take this opportunity to thank the people of Scotland uh, for helping my country, South Africa, end uh, apartheid and start progress towards protection of human rights. Um, I feel that this is a very timely opportunity to take stock of the work of national human rights institutions on human rights and business, the topic at hand. Um, even as we speak, uh, we, we know that outside there, there have been huge oil and toxic waste spills and that populations are asking questions about how governments make policies and how g contracts are signed and the responsibility of business. So I just feel it's very topical. It's a good opportunity to share good practices and to discuss how to overcome the challenges associated with this issue. Uh, and I feel that, I, that this would be central to your discussion. The interplay of business practices and human rights protection has attracted increasing attention over the last two decades. Corporate activities and investments are a vital force in development. We can't do without them. And development is inextricably linked with human rights and security, including human security. However, business enterprises do not always appreciate this linkage. And so they may well contribute to obstructing rather than realizing human rights. There are several ongoing efforts to better manage the interaction between business and human rights priorities and to ensure corporate respect for human rights. Since 2005, initiatives regarding business and human rights at the international level have been anchored in the work of the Special Representative for Business and Human Rights, Professor John Ruggie. His Protect, Respect, Remedy framework for business and human rights was met with unprecedented support in the Human Rights Council and has contributed greatly to a clarification of the respective roles and responsibilities of states and business with regard to human rights. Based on his work, the Human Rights Council has now affirmed that corporations have a responsibility to respect human rights. And I'm pleased that the special representative is present today to share with us his experience and ideas, including his proposal to develop guiding principles for the implementation of the framework. Another important initiative is the UN Global Compact, created in 2000 with the support of OHCHR, my office, which has become the largest global forum aimed at aligning business activities with UN goals, including human rights. The human rights component of the compact was strengthened when in June 2006, the Global Compact Board established a human rights working group. OHCHR is a member of this working group chaired by Mary Robinson, and I would like to specially welcome Mary to this meeting, and I look forward to her keynote presentation. Mary, as you know, was my predecessor in this position, a very hard act to follow, I must say. 
through our active involvement in the Global Compact and in collaboration with other partners, we have contributed to the development of practical tools, enabling business to better understand human rights in order to integrate their principles into business management. My office also works closely with the International Coordinating Committee of the National Human Rights Institutions to strengthen the capacity of its members to promote and monitor the implementation of international human rights standards at the national level. I wish to highlight some significant initiatives related to our collaboration on today's theme. In June 2009, the ICC, in collaboration with OHCHR, organized a side event during the 11th session of the Human Rights Council. Approximately 30 representatives from national human rights institutions, non-governmental organizations, and states met to discuss the emerging role of national human rights institutions in business and human rights. A similar meeting was held at the 14th session of the Human Rights Council in May 2010, co-organized by my office, the ICC, and the government of Norway. And on that occasion, I highlighted the important role that national human rights institutions play at the national level in enhancing access to remedies for victims of corporate human rights abuses and in addressing business-related human rights challenges, including monitoring and handling complaints related to business practice. Such institutions can and do also play a crucial role in advising on matters of legal reform. For example, in Kenya, the National Human Rights Institution there conducted a public inquiry related to allegations of human rights violations arising from the activities of salt companies there. The inquiry investigated the allegations made by representatives of the local community and formulated recommendations to improve the situation. Similarly, the Jordanian National Human Rights Institution presented its work in relation to promoting labor rights, training of labor inspectors and company owners, as well as its activities in mediating cases related to business and human rights. I'm encouraged by the specific initiatives and activities that national human rights institutions have been undertaking and recommend that these initiatives be documented and compiled as best practice, practices to share among all national human rights institutions. And of course, the national human rights institutions also benefit from the uh, expertise of uh, 37 uh, mandate holders appointed by the Human Rights Council. And I know that the mandate holder on um, um, environment contributed to uh, a recent case in England which resulted in the conviction of a company for, for dumping toxic waste in Cote d'Ivoire. In 2008, my office published the results of a survey conducted in collaboration with the special representative that provided information about the mandate and the capacities of national human rights institutions to manage corporate related grievances and highlighted significant differences in terms of competence in complaints handling. This methodology found an echo in the publication of the Asia Pacific Forum of National Human Rights Institutions um, APF publication on functions that national human rights institutions can fill in the context of monitoring and addressing corporate related human rights abuses. This publication could be a useful tool for work by national human rights institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, national human rights institutions represent indispensable conveyor belts between governments and all actors in a community. They typically help spot weak links in the national protection system, and they help devise corrective measures. They are instrumental in connecting the dots 
between the various initiatives developed at all levels of societal interaction, including those between human rights advocacy and business practice. The declaration which you will adopt in the coming days as the outcome of this conference represents a suitable platform to reiterate your commitment to the preparation of substantive action plans for your respective institutions. It could also include a roadmap for research and advocacy on the impact of business in the realization of human rights. It may identify ways to enhance the capacity of your national human rights institution to monitor the protection and promotion of human rights at the national level in relation to the corporate sector. Surely the path forward would benefit from suggestions about how to facilitate the sharing of best practices through the use of websites and databases. Also highly welcome would be a reflection on how to bolster mediation and conciliation methodologies to resolve disputes among different stakeholders and actors such as business enterprises, trade unions, governments, and victims of corporate-related human rights abuses. I recommend that the National Human Rights Institutes appoint focal points on human rights and business in order to work with governments and business corporations to ensure that national action plans and programs include both business and human rights considerations. I welcome the initiative of the ICC to establish a working group on business and human rights, and I look forward to learning more about its activities. Let me assure you that my office stands ready to support national human rights institutions' initiatives in this area, and we will work closely with the ICC. I further encourage the National Human Rights Institution's interaction with regional and international human rights mechanisms in monitoring states' compliance with their international obligations concerning business and human rights. Broadening partnership with the UN Global Compact, the media, academia, business organizations, and trade unions is also an objective to be pursued earnestly. So as co-organizer of this conference, I would like to extend my appreciation to all the participants for their contributions. In particular, I note the outcome document from the NGO Forum as an important element of discussion which could help refine strategies of multi-stakeholders cooperation. Um, before I leave, I feel this is a very important uh, moment to enable me to officially launch the publication um, of the Asia Pacific Forum of National Human Rights Institutions, the Association for the Prevention of Torture, and my office, uh, all of whom have developed a guide on torture prevention. I bet there are many guides out there on how to torture, but this is a guide on torture prevention. And this publication has been designed as a practical uh, capacity building tool to support national human rights institutions in identifying and developing concrete activities to prevent torture. Uh, so I'm very pleased to launch that here. I wish you all a very successful conference and look forward to the adoption of a substantive declaration. Thank you, presiding officer.